In this video, we're going to talk about Venco Ventures, trading under the ticker symbol BBIG. We're going to explore what makes the stock so popular, where it may be heading next, and if you should be buying the stock. Before today's video begins, if you like my content and would like to watch more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Venco Ventures is a startup operating as a holding company and is officially classified as an industrial conglomerate, but it really is a company for which the value is mostly relying on social media and video streaming services. The reason why the company was so popular with retail investors are twofold. On one hand, many believe in the potentials of a video streaming service that is implanted in India, and they do expect that the monetization will be able to bring in a large amount of cash inflows over time, especially given that there are few rivals on the ground and that the potential market is one of the largest on earth. Another reason is probably more significant, and what arguably moved the stock a lot these days. Venco Ventures is currently being shorted by a lot of institutional traders, which also attracted a lot of people looking to short squeeze the short sellers. And this is why there seems to be a lot of back and forth in the stock price. Basically, the short positions are first borrowed from brokers, sold on market, and then eventually recovered and given back to brokers. The expectation there is that Venco Ventures shares are going lower and that they can recover the stock with a profit. In the meantime, those positions will incur financial costs in order to remain open, which is why any delay extending the duration of time of which those positions have to remain open would increase the losses and decrease the potential profits of the short sellers. As far as Venco is concerned, the shares have not been pushed lower despite the fact that there are a lot of short sellers actively pushing the stock price downward and that there may also be dark pool operations going on. But these efforts didn't stop Venco from going further up all the opposite. Recently, it surged in the stock market, probably as a result of collaboration announcements, as well as the collective efforts of retail investors to make sure that the stock price remains high. The volume of the stock is also pledging in its favor, with the volume almost double of where it has been over the past 10 or 90 days. I believe that the stock is looking strong and that at least it's not going to get any lower yet. With that being said, I believe that Venco can be a good position to be included in your portfolio, assuming that the risk is tolerable and managed. Another thing about Venco is that fundamentals may be criticized, but it's not a central piece of this position, where traders' sentiment has completely replaced a substantial part of the fundamental analysis place. But that's just the nature of the beast. The market is based on expectation and greed, and it has always been true, but it's especially true here. My recommendation is to buy the stock, but to keep most of your allocation for later, with the assumption that its share price will pull back a little bit after the initial surge. The stock may not be back to new highs just yet, but the momentum is definitely there. So. Time is definitely on the short squeezer's side because they don't have to pay any financing fees to keep their positions open. Looking at the current environment, I think that we have to be careful with having exposures in the equity market. The market has been predicted to eventually go through a major pullback or even recession for more than a decade at this point, and that its future outcome depends on a number of elements. First of all, after the QE years and the drastic increase in asset price and the corresponding decrease of their yields, we have to remember that the market doesn't mirror the real economy. Otherwise, we would have seen a market trading a lot more sideways. And then 2020 saw another big push in asset prices, not just for the blue chips, but also for the growth stocks. There are generally two explanations. The first one is that more money is printed across the board, and because the real economy has been stagnating in real terms, 
the capital had to find somewhere to be placed, and this place was the globalized finance, and it has been used to buy up assets ever since. That was the case for quite a while, but now that QE is touching its end in North America, and that in Europe they're considering to slow down the speed of printing. In other words, new money will not necessarily play an important part in keeping the asset prices up, and that goes the same or especially true for equities. But, but that decrease of new money is partially compensated with the increase of geopolitical tensions rising across the world. And the more tensions there are, the more money tends to flow to the US and North America, because it is perceived as a safe haven for capital from different countries, especially the ones that are currently having turmoil or social unrest. One last phenomenon is the attempt of market participants to create artificial bubbles, protect their capital. So in order to not just remain cash heavy, but to concentrate their purchases in a few specific sectors so that they don't have to lose a lot of money. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, not everyone will come out of it as a winner, but instead of just seeing your money melting away, many chose to play this game of hot potato so that whoever gets the potato the last is the loser, but everybody else, they get to at least keep their capital. So what all these mean for the market is that the degree of uncertainty will increase over the next month and years, especially as the expectation for a recession is building up. So there are economic difficulties accumulating across the world, but especially from Asia and the sentiment coming from the US Fed about like a possible recessionary period. All of these elements led me to conclude that it is important to keep those speculative positions at a reasonable level. A healthy portfolio normally contains most of its positions in sectors that are different with mature industries and predictable cash flows like REITs, fixed income, utilities, and preferred shares. The rest should then be invested in growth stocks or to remain cash heavy in case there's an opportunity to scoop the bottom or average down. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.